Okay, so it's really uh, just a uh, work session, and I want to pick up on something that um, now I need these. This other thing that's because I want to just start with. What happened to the slash? No. Sorry, but this is I'm not in love. Did I not? Did I just take out like a lot of a lot of handouts and what did I do with them here? Okay. All right. Um, can, uh, can you move a little bit? Uh, do you, sure. Matthias, is it okay? Because there's, there's so few people, so we can work better, or is it you want to be protected? I'd like, to, I'd like to be in the back. You need to? Leave it out? Okay. And uh, then I'm just gonna, that means for you that I'll be moving in um, a little bit more. Okay, uh, today, work session, because we're so few, it's in five years, this is the very first time we're doing something uh, that is based on just a German text, there's no translation. And you can see, it is just like the hardcore. And because this is a, uh, a session that is for German speakers, I'm doing an experiment. We will do one of his poems that is written in Munda in Alemannisch. And I want to show you what I have said for five years. I have said to you that German, the kind of German, the literary German that we have, is ultimately very artificial. The Germany is very regionally based, and everybody writes in their own in their own dialect. And that Valsa too, you will see that he speaks very differently. He speaks with a very strong R. And that one of the what he spoke first is the regional dialect is is Alemannisch. Uh, before we go, this, this, so this talk today or our work session today will be about the power of language, the use of language, and one of the major themes in, in Balzac's work. And I want to show, but ultimately have a work session on just analyzing how the text works. Um, um, Clive said last time that he's a master craftsman. And I want to show, hopefully today, that um, just how his um, what is craftsmanship, um, how is craftsmanship's work in this, uh, in, in Mutasso. Before I start, I'd like to just have a very <coughs> brief um, survey or, or just want to feel out from you how you did with the text. How far did you get? What did you make of Mutasso? Just, just, just want to get some idea of where you are. I know you read the whole thing. And I puzzled? Know. Puzzled? <coughs> worked well? Liked it? How did liked you? It, liked it very much. I thought in the long stretches it was very good. I thought there were a few themes that really weren't worked out too well. Such as? Can you um, think of something right now? The thing that immediately pops into my head is uh, Percy works with uh, Eval Kites. And Percy is supposed to be, you know, the real healer. Yeah. But it's not clear to me why the treatment of Eval doesn't work. Very good. Okay. It is, I think, if you think of every novel to some degree as a mystery novel, then if you, it has to have, otherwise there's no suspense. Okay? And if you can think about, if you, can I just put it all of those right now? No, I need that. Don't give it to me yet, because then it should be something like that. Um, if you think about it, if you set back, first he could be accused of killing kinds, able killing pain. Yeah? Okay? There's always a reason why somebody's named something like that. Uh, and why is it that Percy tortures Ewald with that narrative? We have to question that. Why does he use this course of treatment? And why does this course of treatment, if we want to call it the talking cure, which is actually a reversal of your, our regular talking cure, where the patient talks and the analyst is quiet, here the healer talks and the patient is quiet. And the result of the cure is not healing, but it's the opposite. He kills himself. Why? What is, so it's a complete reversal of what we usually know. Yes? So why is this the way it is? What does he mean by that? What does he want? Complete reversal of what we usually know. Okay, so that's one thing. I think that is the mystery. Okay, what, what else? Do you, any, anything else you find? Well, that? just uh, if I'm thinking about things that I've got yeah. sort of left hanging, I didn't really understand why um, he fixates, if Percy fixates on Sandra later, you know, that that's the thing yes. that he loves. Yes, in, in part four. Yeah. Let, me, let me just, before we go to this, this is very late in the book. <coughs> How, who has gotten through the whole thing? Be honest. Who has gotten through half of it? 
Oh, that's very good. Half of it. Okay, so we have one, only one person who's gotten scholarly. Half of it means what? Per, no, one and two? All of you know three because we have read it together, my dean says. So everybody knows section three. And you section read section one. What about section two? I know. Skim through the whole thing. Skim through the whole thing. Oi, okay. <laughs> Not good for close reading, the skimming part. Okay, let's go to, let's just let be on the, on the same page. Let's just make sure that we know what's where, okay? So this, uh, the large book, the book Mutasol, has four parts. Okay, so it has, number one is about Percy. And it is his narrative. It is, it is his treatment of Ava Times. He goes to his, he goes to his uh, patient room in Chapman. He sits down and he talks to him. Yes? And good. Uh, section two. It's very, it's very simply structured. We're talking about, okay, Vaza will pretend that what he does when he writes, because we wrote an essay about it, it's called Sprache sonst nichts, is that he writes, he just lets go. What he did do in this book, he created a Lichtgestalt, a, uh, a, a, a very positive figure, and what he did, he lets the language carry him. And the language, because he's happy when he wrote this particular book, the language carried him and it, he just produced it. Not so. This is a very carefully worked out book. Uh, it's very well balanced and everything in this book is crafted. So if he pretends, as he will, that, this, that the language produced this work by itself, this may be true on a particular level as he's sitting there being happy writing, but it is not true um, about his craftsmanship. He is a, a craftsmanship, he's a very crafty, calculating author who wants to create a particular kind of effect with the work that he has. He will pretend that he is a Percy character. The way Percy gives his talk, he comes and he speaks completely unprepared, and the language carries him through the talk. And he wrote this essay, Sprache sonst nichts, and in Sprache sonst nichts language not, and nothing else, he has, he creates an image of the writer that is precisely like the Percy, like the Percy character. But, this is, but we can show in this that this book is um, completely it is completely worked out, and we will we will get to that. So, so, so section two is what? Kainz's. Kainz. It is now we talk about we have now Kainz's narrative himself. Okay, and this is interesting for us when as we do we're going into Wednesday. It is a thank you. Uh, and he said there should be light. Oh, because okay, Kainz. It says Kainz. And it is his apologia, it's an apology, it's a rechtfertigung. The, key, the term rechtfertigung is the key term for, for Walter. It is a justification of his life and of his actions. So here we have Kainz's narrative. So you have a big jump, Percy's narrative, Kainz's narrative, three. We have read that, that is Feinlein's narrative. And four, we go back to Percy again. When we meet Percy in section four, it is where everybody gets killed off. We already know that Kainz is dead, and we already know that Feynman has gone crazy. So we know the results. We have the Percy narrative, the Kainz narrative, the Feynman narrative, and the finishing up narrative. So we have actually a very distorted book that consists of a number of narratives in which three characters are giving an account of their life and attempt at justifying their lives. One results in suicide, out of what, for what reason, of unrequited love, we could say. Someone, we, we will look at this section a little bit more and see, he's someone stuck in the Walser Triangle. Fine lines problem, we talked about this last time. We'll talk a, lot, a, little, bit, a little bit more about that. What's fine lines issue? He's, uh, he's, he's <coughs> being supplanted by a yeah. Age. Age. Okay. Oh, okay. I guess we got better look at, at, at fine line again. Age. Okay. You say age. All right. Let, let's look at fine line again. Let's look at the, let, let, let's look at Kawabacho when we're when we're doing it. And then um, and then Percy. Um, now at this point, 
the, the entire Shablingen community has this, has this integrated, and Percy is telling you where things are going. Uh, Kainz is dead, Finland is being displaced from Shablingen to, to the island of Rheinau, and Percy is now in search of what he is liking. Everybody in this book is liking something, and is in search of something, and is trying to compensate for an absence, for a lack. Sometimes successfully, Sometimes not so successful, and that's why we need to look at this Christmas story in, in a moment. This is about, this really is not working in this pen, um, an absence in Mangel. He's looking for a father figure, and he has various options for father figure. The fine line is, is out. Um, uh, what's, the, what's the Russian guy called? Uh, Müller Sosima is in Müller Sosima dies. And then he says, why in my next life, if I could have you, Massimo, if I'm adopting another father, I will, I will adopt you. So he's looking, he is looking here for, for the father figure. And now, of course, we are thinking, yes, why is he telling uh, Kainz this story? Because he was a potential father. So we're looking at that. So you can see um, Percy, Kainz, Feynman, and Percy. And then we have something else. In each of the Percy stories, we have one <coughs> sermon. Four chapters total, four sermons. First sermon in 1-1, one, one. second sermon in like, sort of like 1-11, I believe. Um, and these are sermons on the theme of Mary. If you look at them. On the theme of Mary. And we have two sermons of Percy's in section 4. Um, so I think it's 417 and 419. Just the chapter's number, and those on the on, those sermons are on the theme of the acceptance of, of, of pain. Okay, I'm just telling you that now. It's acceptance of pain, and in fact, only you know this. The very last sermon that Percy gives is given in a Waldfahrtskirche, Maria Hilf. He goes up to a a mountain. It's a sermon on the mount, and it's a sermon on Golgotha. And he talks, and the key sentence in that sermon is, verlass mich nicht, don't leave me. So it's very clear that it has echoes of Christ being up on the Mount of Olives uh, and trying to accept his pain so that he can transcend his physical being and come back as, as the Savior. What is underlying, what is in this book very strong, is, uh, is, of course, our, our, is Christian imagery and is, uh, our Christ Christological things. Obviously, we have the, the Christmas story underlying all of, all of Percy's um, um, in character. Okay, so that's the structure of the book. And the only thing that we have looked at <coughs> very carefully, and I will look at this a little bit again, um, is the, is the, the final narrative. Now, the book overall is about the power of language, and the power of love, and what you can do to stop when you, when you do not have love, how you can use language in order to create what you don't have. We defined writing, or we, we reviewed that Balsa thinks writing is um, a compensation for an absence. You write because you're suffering from money. Okay, so I'm, this is just a review, basically, of what we did last time. Now I want to show you something which is a, a Walser poem, written in Mund 